Hey YouTube, Cal Gunner Prep here, and today we're gonna see if we can reload 300 blackout ammo using 30 carbine bullets. All right, so the whole reason why we're doing this video is we want to see if we can make 300 blackout ammo using 30 carbine bullets. Now, why would I want to do that, you ask? Uh, the reason for that is 30 carbine bullets are about 10 cents a pop uh, compared to you know normal um, 300 blackout bullets, which this particular one, this is an M80 um, uh, bullet, 147 grain full metal jacket boat tail. Uh, these are about 17 cents a piece. Right, um, so if I can make this work, that actually means that my overall cost per round is 19 cents per round for 300 blackout. Right, 19 cents per round for 300 blackout. I mean, that's just that's incredible. That's super cheap. I'm not expecting a whole lot of accuracy, but you know, three, four inch groups for me, that's fine. Just going to the range and having some fun. Right, I'm not doing competition or hunting with this, and uh, all it's this is purely just about saving cost for me. Right, but doing some research, trying to see if anybody else had actually done this before, um, trying to find load data, trying to find results, if this would actually feed correctly or not. Uh, I wasn't able to find anybody who had definitively said, yes, we tried this in an AR platform and it worked, or even, no, it didn't work. I found a bunch of people saying, oh, well, you know, I think it might work, or, you know, it probably won't work. Um, but I wanted to give this a try for myself and see what type of results I'd get. And I figured, you know what, there's, I'm trying to do this. I'm sure there's somebody else out there on YouTube uh, trying to save some money on ammo costs as well. And so I figured I'd, I'd put this out there for, for those folks as well. So uh, today we're going to test not just if this particular cartridge will chamber in an AR-15 out of an AR-15 magazine, but we're going to test a few different magazines as well. So we're going to see not just if it chambers, but if it has to use or if it only works out of a specific uh, mag type. So to test, I have got uh, Gen 3 uh, P mags, 10 round P mags. I've got some five round uh, steel mags and I've got hex mag uh, 1030 max. So this is, it looks like a 30 rounder, but it actually only holds 10 because, you know, we live in California. So, but, um, but uh, yeah, so I've got four of these guys loaded up. Um, oh, one last thing. We are doing this in my house. Uh, so the, everything we try today is going to be dummy rounds, right? Uh, no powder, no primer. We want to make sure everybody stays completely safe. Um, when we're testing anything with firearms at home, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we eliminate any risk of accidental discharge. And so uh, by doing that, we're going to be using just dummy rounds today. But um, so anyhow, I got four of these guys loaded up and we'll put it in the PMAG first and we'll see what we get. Let's uh, we'll start with the PMAG uh, 10 round first. Again, we got four. So uh, we're going to um, make sure that all four feed and all four eject uh, as they as they're as they should. So. All right. Here we go. Number one. All right. Look at that, guys. Fed out of the mag into the chamber and it ejected no problem. So here's number two and same thing. Perfect. Number three and it's a lot. Now, number four, last one. Bam. Look at that, guys. All right. Well, that's pretty exciting, actually, because uh, like I said, you know, if I'm just wanting to do some really cheap uh, range ammo, I can cut my cost. Uh, by you know 12 7 to 12 cents a bullet um you know reloading so that's that's pretty significant there um i'm, I'm actually really happy about this so i consider this a success right we we know that uh this round works or at least it'll feed um out of this particular magazine so um i know that i can take this to the range as long as i'm using this one particular mag but uh, you know, let's let's see if it works with the other mags as well. So uh, let's I'll load them up and we'll try this again. All right, guys. So I did have to kind of adjust the uh, camera angle on us a little bit here. Um, but uh, as you can see, I've got the uh, hex mag uh, 1030 mag um, loaded up with the four uh, dummy cartridges. So uh, here we go. Let's see if it works. Well, there's number one. 
Oh, no. Number two, didn't feed. All right, just needed a little bit of oomph. All right, it's number two out. Man. All right. Number three. And number four. All right, so I'm not sure what happened there, um, but it appears that this hex mag uh, had a little bit of issues trying to feed um, into, the, into the chamber. So go ahead and eject it. Let's take a look at the mag, see if we can see anything on it. All right, so let me uh, let me get a PMAG over here, and we can compare them side by side and see if we can see what the difference is. All right, so let me see if I can get the right angle with the light. Uh, we'll do it one at a time. All right, so with the uh, with the PMAG, you can see how it's kind of beveled here at the at the front. And so what that's doing is it's forcing the cartridge as it comes out off to the side to kind of get turned in and then go, go, you know, a little bit more centered. With the hex mag, um, there, that beveled part doesn't exist, right? It's a little bit more square. So it's going to come out and it's going to keep that line that it, that it had. And because it's got that shorter, stubbier, round nose, um, combined with the shorter overall cartridge length, right? It, it's not getting lined up with the chamber um, as, it, as it leaves the mag. So it's got that, that slop, I guess, is, is be the technical term um, when it comes out of the mag and, and then gets into the chamber. Um, so I'm gonna say that's a 110 grain, uh, 300 blackout in this particular hex mag is not going to work. All right, so last but not least, we have our five round aluminum mag. So I'm going to load that up and then we'll give it a shot and see what happens. All right, guys, so I had to adjust the camera again, but uh, we've got our uh, five round steel mag uh, loaded here. I actually lost one of the uh, dummy rounds with the 110 grain bullets in it uh so i've only got three in this so sorry about that but um we'll see if we even make it that far so here we are round number one and that didn't work let's try it again <laughs> it still didn't work one more time nope all right lock the bolt back Try and drop the mag. Wow, look at that, guys. Just let me get the camera to focus here. There we go. So, as you can see, this thing just straight up performed the worst. Um, I mean, look at that, guys, right there. You can see that the, the bullet actually got pushed back into the cartridge. Um, it just, I mean, this mag just grabbed a hold of it and uh, it cleared that last one out. You can actually see right there where the, the round just, you know, fit into the mag and mag just held onto it. And it, it went nowhere. So, steel mag, absolutely not. Hex mag, eh if I had to, but it's not gonna work that great. Gen 3 10 round P mag, works like a champ. So as long as I use these magazines, I think I'm gonna have pretty good, uh, pretty good success. So uh, I'm gonna actually load some of these 110 grain rounds uh, for real, put some uh, explosive stuff in it, and then take it out to the range and, and see what happens. All right, guys, so I really hope you enjoyed watching the video today. I'm really excited about the results, 19 cents per round. I think it's gonna work. So we're gonna do a part two follow-up video. So please click the subscribe button down below. Follow us on Twitter at Calgon and Prep. Like us on Facebook. That way you'll know when the next video drops. Until then, thanks for watching.